late in 2020, there was a news article that broke out saying that there had been a number of people who had come forward who had accused prominent Christian teacher, uh, evangelist, and apologist, like apologetics expert Ravi Zacharias, of uh, sexual misconduct and harassment. And uh, the organization that he started commissioned an investigation about it, an independent investigation, and they found those uh, instances to be that, that it did happen. That's all the investigation was trying to find out, not how many times, how often, but is there evidence that there was at least one case of sexual misconduct and or harassment? And what they found was um, there's evidence for multiple cases like that. And uh, I, th I thought about, you know, making this vlog about it uh, because I've encountered both in my personal life with friends and professionally as a minister, just at church, people of, you know, talking about it and asking questions like, what do we make of this? How do we understand this? And I'm not interested in making like an investigative journalism thing. There's so many videos about that already. There's so many articles about that. And at the same time, we want to have compassion for the victims, most of whom, though, we don't even know about. Like, no one's even... Because all the study found out was that there's evidence that this is happening, but we don't have um, an understanding of, like, how many, who. Uh, so we want to have compassion on them. And then also on the family members who have to deal with this reality. But I wanted to talk about it to help give uh, what I think is a helpful perspective for us believers. Uh, so while it is about him, it really isn't about him. It's about how we're applying it. Ravi Zacharias' influence on my life was 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 alright. I wasn't so much into his books. Uh, I I tried reading a few of his books, but I felt that other apologetics books. You know, apologetics that explained the faith did a better job. Um, William Lane Craig, uh, Norman Geisler. So I preferred their apologetics books, but he, I really listened to a lot of Ravi Zacharias' podcasts, uh, Let My People Think. Um, I would watch some of the videos where he would take questions and respond to them. Honestly, I didn't find the apologetics part that as impressive as William Lane Craig, I said, doing the same thing or Norman Geisler doing the same thing, or, or even Dr. Rice Brooks from our movement, Every Nation, doing the same thing. I felt like they engaged people's questions better and got to the heart of the issue better. What I did like about listening to him a lot, though, was just the mastery he had of his topic. He would quote Bible verses, like just huge chunks of the Bible, on and on. He would uh, quote um, books, he would recite poems. I just found it amazing, and I wanted to be like that. I wanted to be someone who who, if I referenced something, I knew what I was talking about. It wasn't a, a very heavy influence, but I, I did learn a lot from him. So those accusations bothered me a lot. I wasn't surprised that it happened, though. Uh, not, not, let me explain it. I'm not saying that I've expected it to happen for him, but I wasn't surprised that it happened because, one, everyone has struggles. I mean, if I've got struggles, why wouldn't he? That's one. And secondly, I don't know him. Just because I listen to his podcasts or see his social media posts, that doesn't mean I, I know him. So how would that be evidence for me that he's not hiding anything in the closet, you know? I mean, it's just use me. You, you know, you, if you see this vlog or you see me on social media, you see what I'm putting out there. You don't see how I really am. You don't see how I am late at night when my kids are driving me nuts and my wife is tired and, and I, I might lose my temper. You don't see those things. And so we mustn't make the mistake of thinking that just because we see a lot of cultural output by a person, nakilala na natin siya. I think what surprised me more wasn't the fact that something like this could happen, but more like something like this could happen for so long. I felt bad for the sheer number of victims that the study just hinted at, like, this is all we've found so far, we've found evidence, and it's like, there's no telling how much more. And so after some reflection, here are some of my thoughts, and I hope this helps for, I don't know, maybe people who have been influenced by him, who have been helped by him, and think, what do I do with that? Or it's not just him, it's not just uh, Ravi Zacharias, but um, every once in a while, right, there's going to be news of a prominent Christian, a famous Christian, maybe they were a celebrity, and then... 
they, they leave the faith or they were even in ministry and it turns out there's a financial impropriety or their family's a mess um, because of, you know, secret sin. And then what do we do with that when that kind of thing happens? Here are some of my thoughts. Number one, celebrity pastoring really doesn't work. There's no category for that in the Bible and we're not supposed to have one. And, and I, I say this with an understanding a little bit of the irony that I'm kind of like that. Feeling by on, sorry. I mean, it's not because of me. <laughs> I mean, sure, everybody goes like, hey, where's that big nostrilled bald guy with glasses? No, of course not. But ever since I married my wife, we just got, you know, I just had to join her in the, in the spot. I just got, just got pushed there. And so... I know that, that yeah, uh, I have that kind of influence that isn't mine, but I know also that that's not what ministry looks like. I love to help this way. I love to make posts or now vlogs, but I also know this isn't enough. In fact, um, when people message me on IG or FB and they say, Pastor, can you help me? I'm like, look, I am a pastor. I do pastor our church in Victory Santa Rosa, but I don't think I'm your pastor. I'll, I'll say that, you know, I'll often encourage them. Who can you talk to? Who do you know? Because walang kapalit yun eh. There's no replacement for that. It doesn't matter what you see about a person. That's not the way God meant for things to be. In fact, in the Bible, we have examples of people, almost celebrity worshiping ministers. And Paul had to speak against that. In 1 Corinthians 1, 12 to 15, sabi niya, What I mean is that each of you says, I follow Paul. I follow Apollos, or I follow Cephas, which is the name of Peter, or I follow Christ. And Paul's response is, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? In other words, sino ba si Paul? Bakit siya yung, bakit sunod na sunod kayo sa taong yan? Eh, di ba si Jesus dapat? And he even goes on to say, I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that none of you may say you were baptized in my name. And he's saying, look, it's not about that celebrity minister. And I think we have that in this age of social media, in this age of people. You know, you can watch people's videos, you can see, you know, and I know my, the most influential part of my ministry is my memes, no? and I'm quite proud of them. <laughs> I'm quite proud of them, but it's not the same thing as walking with someone, as knowing someone. Following someone online is not the same thing as shared life, which is what we call it in our church. 1 Corinthians 4, 15-16 says, For though you have countless guides in Christ, you do not have many fathers. For I became your father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. I urge you then, be imitators of me. And this talks about there's tons of guides, there's countless content out there. In fact, I have asked to modify this. For though you have countless Christian influencers on social media, though you have countless podcasts to listen to, countless vlogs like this, diba? you don't have many fathers. And a spiritual father, a spiritual mother is someone you have relationship with. Someone you see up close. and Someone who sees you up close. This isn't that. It's not. Walang kapalit yun. Second thought that I have here, is that effective ministry is more about how you live than what you produce. In an age where production, 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 right? make a vlog, make a preaching, make a social media post to connect with your preaching, there's so much push to do that. We must never forget that what really changes lives has to do with how we live. And see, Christian leaders and ministers, when we go bad, there's a disproportionate impact. Meaning the number of people who are affected by that. I mean, you know, people living double lives, people having sex scandals, financial scandals. That happens. But why is it that the case of Ravi leads so many to question their faith? And it's because of the, the garb of being a Christian teacher. James 3 verse 1 says, Not many of you should become teachers, <laughs> my brothers, for the, we know that those who teach, that we who teach, will be judged with greater strictness. I think about this verse a lot, honestly, before I preach. Because I know I'm going to be judged with greater strictness. In fact, it, it's not just what you teach that will be judged, but even how you live. You know, in 1 Timothy 3 and Titus 2, Paul gives qualifications of what a minister should be like. And when you read those lists, the majority of them is lifestyle and character. It's not charisma. It's not teaching ability. There's only one, like he says, able to teach. 
but the vast majority of it is patient, hospitable, temperate, self-controlled, not a lover of money, not easily angered, the way they treat their family, how you live is the real testimony. Forget being able to produce things online if people around you don't see that it's consistent with your lifestyle. Wow. So, you know, third thought I had is that the word of God is still true despite the mode of delivery. That's a personal opinion for me. One question I've got from a lot of people is, what am I supposed to do with the fact that his ministry helped my life? His books helped me, you know? Uh, to that, I would say, praise God. Thank you, Lord, for what you did, for how you used um, that person. In Philippians, Paul says um, that there are people who are preaching Jesus from a selfish, ungodly, arrogant perspective. And he just says, I'm, I just praise God anyway, because at least Jesus is being preached. Now, if you can't and it bothers you and you're not able to get over it, then no. You know, no one should try to force you not read it. I like this quote that I found by a preacher named Charles Spurgeon who lived like he preached this like almost 150 years ago. But he gives this issue of like celebrity Christians falling away. Can you believe that 150 years ago, this was an issue? And it's it's a super duper long quote. I'll just put a link in the <laughs> show notes. The description, the description of the vlog. Such an amateur. I'll just I'll just put a link in the description of the vlog below so you can read the whole thing. But he gives his example. He says, What if someone who you've gotten the word of life from, someone you've learned a lot from, maybe too much from, Sabinya, what if that person in the future should turn out to be untrue? And unfaithful, here's what he says, do not follow his unbelief. For if we believe not, he is still faithful, he cannot deny himself. The unfaithfulness of Christians, even Christian ministers or celebrity pastors, what a word or what a phrase, but even those people's unfaithfulness does not point to God's unfaithfulness. God is still faithful. It was just because there's some people who turn out to be living fake lifestyles. That doesn't mean everyone is. The Lord knows those who are His, He says. Sabi niya, do let me put this very, very plainly. If we believe not, sinaman niya sarili niya, if we believe not, if those that seem to be the choice teachers of the age, if those that have been the most successful evangelists of the period, if those who had st stand high in the esteem of God's people, if those with the most Twitter followers, if those with the best social media profiles, if those with the most shared videos, if those who the YouTube algorithm favors the most, if those people should in an evil hour forsake the eternal truths and begin to preach to you some other gospel, which is not the gospel of Christ, I beseech you, I beg you, I implore you, sabi niya, follow us not, whoever we may be or whatever we may be. Suffer no teachers, however great they may be, to lead you to doubt, for God abideth faithful, God stays faithful. Man, sabi niya, niyo kaming susundan. And I love the humility in his own statement, sabi niya, kahit ako yun. It wasn't throwing other people under the bus that, eh, yeah, those people turn out to be fake. Buti na lang ako, hindi, di ba? Kaya like, follow, subscribe. Hindi yung sinabi niya. Sabi niya, kahit ako, kahit ako, kung maging ganun ako, huwag mo kong susundan. Si Lord pa rin sundan mo. And so if the word bears fruit in your life, then praise God. Siguro my last thought na lang is, no amount of ministry or any kind of professional success is worth destroying your name or your family. I can't imagine what that's like right now. I can't imagine what the family must feel. Because when he passed away, it was this flood of honor, of gratitude, of appreciation. Parang, do we think that that the, the that moment when he passed away will stop the sorrow that they feel right now for all the accusations given against him? Of course not. Uh, I'm grieved for those victims. Do you think, do you think they're gonna be like, well, itin ginawa sa akin, pero yung librong yan, maganda naman. I mean, no, of course not. Diba? Pero at least yung podcast niya. No, it's, it's not worth it. There's a vlog that Carla had recently of, of 
Father's Day, me and her, and I got to share the, this lesson I learned from my dad. And one of the key lessons, really, my dad left with us was that, really, your name. No, you don't let anyone take that away from you. Lose money na, lose opportunities na, let them say you're weak, let them say whatever else they want, but don't let them say na lang that you're living a fake life or that you weren't consistent, you don't have integrity. Like many Christian ministers have said, uh, like their families have said that, you know, our my husband, my dad was very publicly involved with the church and my relationship with him had to suffer as a result. So yeah, not as lighthearted, but um, pretty serious episode today. It's a serious subject. Join me in praying lang as we end. Lord, thank you that you are faithful, even when we and other people are unfaithful. Help us, Lord, to value our relationship with you and the relationships, our spiritual and biological family you've put around us more than uh, the applause and the appreciation and the likes, shares, and comments of people online. We thank you for those. We're thankful for those, Lord, but uh, help us to value the right things first. And we claim that verse in Jude, God, that says, To him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us before his glorious presence. Lord, you are the only one who can keep us from falling. Help us, Lord, to fix our eyes on you. We pray for the victims of this and many other scandals, Lord, of church leaders. Lord, help us as church leaders to be faithful. And we pray that you will preserve the faith of those. Help them find you despite the actions of others. And we pray for the families and the people who have to make hard decisions connected to this. Please give them wisdom, Lord, at this time. Help us, Lord, to keep our eyes on you. In Jesus' name, amen.